It's a banned substance in South Africa, but very compelling results from scientific studies abroad suggest that magic mushrooms might sooner or later become a part of a therapeutic toolbox psychiatrists access to help people living with depression and anxiety. 75-year-old Monica Cromhout, a former nurse, was not impressed when she was told in court the charges against her were being dropped. What? You've lost my file? Make another one. You've put all this me through all this trouble and now you just tell me you've lost the file. She wanted her day in court and so the state obliged and a new docket was opened. She'd been charged with the possession of and dealing in psilocybin, commonly known as magic mushrooms, a banned substance in South Africa, which she supplied at gatherings she calls Soma Ceremonies, the spirit of the mushroom. Monica Cromot is no stranger to carte blanche. We first featured her in 2015, soon after she was arrested during one of her magic mushroom ceremonies in the middle of the night. A retired professor had become confused at one of her ceremonies and slipped away. Monica and her search team frantically tried to find him, but he'd ended up at the local police station. The next moment, a contingent of police raided her house, confiscated two kilos of psilocybin and locked her up. After getting bail, Monica continued with these ceremonies in acts of civil disobedience. She claims that over 2,000 people from all walks of life, including doctors and attorneys, have attended her gatherings. Whilst recreational users generally ingest smaller amounts of psilocybin, Monica provides larger doses to participants, up to five grams, who then enter a several hours long deep psychedelic state. They claim that euphoria follows. These ceremonies are intended for spiritual connections, but Monica has found that participants report positive changes in their lives, months or even years after taking psilocybin. Award-winning author, science writer and journalist Leonie Jaber, who suffered depression, claims that psilocybin combined with traditional therapy has had a beneficial impact on her life. I have used psilocybin um, to manage my own mental well-being um, for, I would say, six years now. Um, very small doses occasionally, and occasionally these large therapeutic doses. And I would say it's been absolutely life-changing. I've become much more empathetic with other people. Mm -hmm. I'm able to understand other people's experiences and difficulties in relation to my own. And that's allowed for much deeper levels of interpersonal connection. Leone has released a serialized audiobook, The Psychonauts, which draws together stories from psilocybin users. It also explores the opportunity for psilocybin assisted therapy in South Africa. Cape Town psychiatrist Dr. Kevin Stoloff is not surprised by the surge of interest in psilocybin. The reason for that is that uh, people are generally. Um, quite pessimistic and tired of the limitations of Western psychiatric medicine. About a third of people don't respond to conventional antidepressants. These psychedelic medicines offer a different uh, route or mechanism of action which acts in a very different way from conventional psychiatric medicine. Brain imaging shows that psychedelics such as LSD and psilocybin result in different parts of the brain connecting, leading to deeper insights. And in doing that, there's something about pathways being potentially opened, which have been shut off. And also pathways, negative pathways, for example, negative thinking patterns, which we can regard virtually as pathways in the brain, can be dusted over as if snow was being filled in tracks and allow a fresh uh, slate or a board on which to form new experiences and see things in a different way. Monica was arrested again in 2017 for the same alleged offence, but she's not taking this lying down. She had managed to get a stay in prosecution after her first arrest and is now suing the state, believing her constitutional rights were violated. 
Monica wants the High Court to decriminalize psilocybin, even legalize it. If she fails there, her attorney, Paul Michael Keischel, best known for his part in decriminalizing the private use of cannabis in South Africa, plans to take the matter to the Constitutional Court. She's quite a determined lady, isn't she? She certainly knows what is right and is willing to take on the state to achieve an elevated collective consciousness. Keishel, for example, will argue that in terms of Section 12 of the Constitution, people ought to have a right to put whatever they want into their bodies, so long as they're not harming others or placing an undue burden on the state health services. In their response, the state says it has an obligation to protect all its citizens against harmful substances. And it has the support of a South African professor of pharmacology, who in his affidavit said that the body of evidence currently available for psilocybin shows that it's not a safe substance for human use. But there appears to be no confirmed reports of deaths globally that are attributed exclusively to psilocybin use in healthy individuals. Although psychiatrists warn that when mixed with other drugs, it can lead to psychosis and self-harming behavior. Dr. Stolov stressed that certain people should never use it. I would not recommend that anybody who has a history of psychosis, either in him or herself, or in a first degree relative. In other words, that involves psychosis related to bipolar disorder, a previous um, psychotic response from even cannabis, or somebody in the family, for example, an uncle, an aunt, a father or a mother who has schizophrenia. Research in psilocybin-assisted therapy with regards to depression, anxiety and addictions have been taking place all over the world, the USA, Europe and Australia. Are you going to introduce the latest research? Absolutely, Derek. The world is waking up to psilocybin as a medicine or an effective treatment for a, a variety of psychological ailments. Keishel will present a study conducted by the Centre for Psychedelic Research at the Imperial College London. Twelve severely depressed volunteers were treated with psilocybin. Professor David Nutt was the lead investigator. So the first trial in depression showed uh, it was people with resistant depression. They'd all failed on at least two antidepressants. Some had failed on over 10. They'd all failed on psychological therapy, CBT. Uh, the remarkable thing was after a single treatment, and, and this is the, the power of this approach, one single dosing produces profound improvements in the majority of people. So evidence that psilocybin was able to help with treatment-resistant depression. It was a remarkable study. and It's the most powerful intervention in treatment-resistant depression, certainly the most powerful single treatment effect anyone's ever shown. But the effects of large doses of psilocybin wear off after a few weeks, and now studies will be conducted to see if staggered smaller doses can hold off the depression. And just in the way, same way as we have seen the, the UN and the WHO eventually, after 80 years, accept that cannabis as a medicine, it's almost inevitable that in a few years they will accept that psilocybin as a medicine because the weight of evidence will force them to to have to reevaluate their position. Dr. Stoloff doesn't advocate the use of psilocybin at this stage because it's a banned substance. However, he does hope the laws are relaxed in order to allow psilocybin assisted psychotherapy. He also emphasizes the need for the holders of ceremonies to be safety conscious. What's important is that the providers of these ceremonies are skilled enough to understand when to call for medical assistance. Monica screens participants who want to join the Zoom ceremonies she's been holding in response to COVID-19, 15 in total. And they log in from South Africa and all over the world. We recommend that if it's the first time that someone is journeying, that they, they find someone they know who's responsible, someone just to watch over them, and that person knows how to get hold of us. And during the night, Monica and several watchers, all experienced in mushroom journeys, are on standby should a participant become agitated. Contact is made by phone or WhatsApp messages. In the morning, they all gather online to share their experiences. 
In the meantime, Keishler is confident that Monica has a strong case which will result in at least decriminalizing the possession and use of psilocybin. What would you like uh, your legacy to be? Would you care about it? I do um, care about that I leave something good in my life when I, when I die, that I leave something behind that's good, that the world is a better place. That would be uh, your gift to South Africa? To the world, actually. Thank you for watching our stories here online. And please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.